You want to make sure that you are cleaning your baby's mouth with a clean cloth daily so that you reduce the amount of yeast that is in their mouth. <music> Welcome back to Narsonyi Teaches. My name is Onyinye. If this is your first time here, you are most welcome. In today's video, I will be talking about oral thrush and we'll talk about what causes it, some of the signs and symptoms that accompany the condition, how it's typically managed, and some things that parents can do to prevent it from happening in the first place. Now, before we move into today's video, it is very important for me to state that this is not meant for you to diagnose yourself or your child. Make sure that you are working with a pediatrician or a doctor who knows your health information or who can examine you so that they can create a plan of care that fits your needs. If you haven't done so already, consider hitting the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you can join this growing family and get good maternity information. Without further ado, let's get into it. So oral thrush is a yeast infection caused by a fungus called Candida albicans. Now yeast is usually present in the atmosphere and on the human body, but the body does a good job of keeping it within normal control. The problem is that yeast likes to grow in dark, warm, and moist places, making the mouth a very choice location for its overgrowth. There are some risk factors that make babies at increased likelihood of contracting this particular type of thrush. And that includes poor hygiene practices, where their bottles or the breast is not being cleaned adequately. Also, if mom is using an antibiotic or baby is currently having an antibiotic regimen, it can kill off the good bacteria within the gut and within the body, making the yeast more likely to overgrow its boundaries. Babies also naturally have an immature immune system, making their bodies less likely to ward off infection and giving yeast the upper hand if it has the chance to overgrow. So oral thrush can be easily identified by a healthcare provider who knows what to look for. Its hallmark presentation are little white patches that grow along the insides of a baby's cheek and on their tongue. But in cases of severe infection, those patches can even grow toward your baby's esophagus and their throat. These patches can look like milk residue. So parents sometimes try to wipe it off, but you will find that these patches do not wipe off easily. And if you force it, it can cause bleeding and redness where these patches are attached. It can also be a very painful condition for your baby so your baby may deal with crying or be increasingly fussy also because it is painful your baby may be refusing to nurse or even take a pacifier or feed from their bottle Fortunately, most cases of oral thrush will clear up on their own without any sort of medication at all. But in cases where the thrush persists or is getting worse, you want to take your baby to be seen by a healthcare provider so that they can prescribe an antifungal cream or some sort of regimen to sort of get the condition reeled in. Some things that you can do to manage it on your end include keeping that baby well hydrated. Keep in mind that because the condition is painful, babies may refuse drinking anything and can easily become dehydrated. If your baby does not want to take a bottle, you can get a little syringe and fill it up with their milk or water and make sure that you just put it in their cheek and then they'll swallow from there so that they can stay adequately hydrated. Make sure that you are counting the number of diapers that they have so that you can be sure to let the pediatrician know that the baby is getting enough fluids in their system. If the pain is unbearable for your baby, ask your pediatrician or the healthcare provider if there's something that can be prescribed or given over the counter to help with pain management. It typically takes takes a couple of weeks, but the prognosis is very good for oral thrush. There is a well-known saying that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Some things that you can do to prevent oral thrush in your baby include washing your baby's bottles, nipples, pacifiers, anything that comes in contact with your baby's mouth, especially when they are teething, when babies are more prone to put things in their mouth. You want to make sure that you are cleaning your baby's mouth with a clean cloth daily so that you reduce the amount of yeast that is in their mouth. Also, if you are a nursing mother taking an antibiotic, talk to your provider and let them know that you are breastfeeding feeding and then make sure that you wash your hands before and after you breastfeed your baby and clean around the nipple region just in case the yeast has built up. If your baby has a situation where they continue to have recurrent cases of thrush, Ask your pediatrician or your healthcare provider about a probiotic and they can make a recommendation which can help to build up your baby's gut. If you have learned something from the content of this video, be sure to give it a huge like, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. And don't forget to share this video with somebody who you believe can learn from it. I wish you success as you navigate your parenting journey and until the next video, be blessed. 